Hey guys, how are you? It's Lindy and welcome to a new video. Oh. <laughs> Sorry Pablo, you can go back to sleep. <laughs> Today's video is going to be another wig video because you all know how much I love making these type of videos. And also because I asked you guys in my last wig video if you wanted me to make a video about like how to sew your own wigs. And basically everyone said yes. So today I'm going to show you how to do that, kinda. And today's video is sponsored by Ellie Grace, which is a human hair company. They provided me with some beautiful hair. So I'm going to use all this hair to make a wig today. And I'm going to show you guys how I do it. So if you're interested in that, then please keep on watching. Before I'm going to start the video, I just want to put out a little quick disclaimer and that is that I am in no way a professional wig maker, which you probably already know, but um, I've only been making wigs for like a few months. I think I've only made like three wigs so far, so I'm not the best at it, but I kind of know how to do it. So I'm going to show you guys, but I would highly recommend watching other videos as well. Um, I personally learned how to make a wig by watching other people's tutorials. So, so I'll link like a few tutorials that I learned it from in the description box down below. But you know, at the same time, my wigs all look pretty okay and they haven't fallen apart yet. So there's definitely something that I'm doing right. So today I'm gonna to show you guys what I do right. So let's just jump into it. So I'm actually going to do a voiceover for this video because when I filmed this, it was like 40 degrees in my house. I was acting pretty crazy so I thought it would be easier to do it this way <laughs> so let's just get started on the things you need so first off you of course need to have some hair uh, I got three bundles two of 20 inch and one of 18 inch and I already dyed them orange as you can see but it turned out to be a little bit too bright for me so I'm going to dye it again later on then you also need to have a frontal which is going to be the front of the wig of course and my frontal is 18 inch as well. Then you need a mesh dome cap and I use the lightest color because it matches my skin the best. You also need to have a needle and I use this curved one because it's easier to work with. Some T-pins to hold the hair down. And you also need to have some thread because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to sew something. So let's get cracking! Oh, and you also need to have a wig head, of course, and I'm using one that is 22 inch because that's kind of the size of my head. So first thing you're gonna do is take your mesh dome cap and you wanna put it on your wig head. Make sure it's very tight and secure by using some T-pins to hold it down. And as you can see, I pulled the cap pretty far down because that is the size of my head, so yeah. And then I'm taking my frontal and I'm just putting it onto the mesh dome cap. Uh, because this is the thing that we're going to sew on first. So you want to make sure that it's very centered and even. And also you want to put the frontal a little bit over the mesh dome cap because right now I actually put it on too high. So it needs to be a little bit lower because that's just better for some reason. Don't ask me why. That's just what I learned on the internet. <laughs> and again, you want to take some T-pins to just pin it all down. And when you pin the back of the frontal down, you kind of want to make sure that there are no gaps in between the frontal and the mesh dome cap. Because you can see that it was kind of like lumpy. But you want it to be like as flat as possible because otherwise it's going to turn out a little bit wonky and not so pretty. So as you can see, it's all like flat and secure right now. So now we can get started on sewing the frontal. Ooh, 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 ah, 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 ooh. So then I'm just taking a very long piece of thread and I'm actually doubling it and then tying a knot at the end of the thread. So this is what we're going to use to sew our frontal down. So you actually want to start from the center of the frontal and then work your way down because if you would start from the side and then like work around, uh, the frontal is actually, it's possible that it's going to end up looking a little bit lumpy. So always start from the center and then taking your thread and just, you know, sewing it on. And what I always like to do, I like to make like a little loop as you can see and then put the needle through there so it is even more secure. So now that that is all settled and secure, we can work our way downward. So I like to like sew the frontal onto the dome cap and then with every um, little sew that I do, <laughs> I don't know if I explained it right, but I like to loop it through the thread again. Like you can see right here, um, I just like make a loop and then whoop, put the needle in there. So that way it's even more secure than without doing that. So I honestly just keep on doing that for like the entire frontal. So as you can see, put it through the frontal and then making a little loop and then put the needle through there. And then you got a very tight and secure 
thing going on. <laughs> English is difficult. So yeah, let me just keep on doing this till I'm all the way down. And when you get to the elastic band of the dome cap, you want to make sure that you don't put the needle like all the way through the elastic as well, but only through the top layer of the dome cap, because otherwise um, you're gonna lose the stretch of your dome cap, which is very important if you want to put the wig on. So only put it through the top layer, but once I'm at the very last stitch of the frontal, I actually will put it through the elastic as well. But you only want to do that for the very last stitch of the frontal. So once I'm at the end, I just cut the thread and then just tie some knots in there, just so it stays in place, which is what we want. And then I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps on the other side as well. So start from the center at the top and then work your way downwards with the exact same sewing method. So it's not very interesting. I can show you guys a little bit, but you know, I guess you kind of understand what I'm doing right now. So yeah, our frontal is all ready and sewn down right now. So now we can continue on the bundles. So and I always take my longest bundle first and then sew it onto the bottom of the mesh cap. And you want to start from the bottom and work your way up because otherwise the hair is just going to be in the way and it's not going to be like easy for you. So I'm taking the bundle and I'm just spinning it down just to make sure that it doesn't like fall down, you know, it just makes sewing it easier. Uh, so I pin it down and then I cut the excess bundle off. So I only use like one stroke. You can also use the fold over method and with that method you're not going to cut the bundles but you're just going to keep it like into one long piece but you're just going to fold it over every time. But I've noticed that that method makes your wig look very bulky. So I just like to cut my individual tracks because that just makes it look a little bit better in my opinion. So then I'm just taking my needle, my thread again, and I'm just going to start sewing everything down. So for the first stitch I'm actually going to put the needle through the top of the track itself. So that way it's like very <laughs> secure. I feel like I use that word so much, but you know what I mean. So I only do that for the first and for the last stitch, not for the stitches in between. And for the first stitch, I'm actually also putting it through the frontal as well, just to make sure that my wig is not going to fall apart, because that's of course not what we want. And then for the rest of the bundle, I honestly just use the exact same method as I use for the frontal as well. And again, you want to make sure that you don't put it through the elastic, but only put it through the top layer of the dome cap. Because again, otherwise you're going to lose the stretch. And you also want to make sure that there aren't like any hair stuck in the thread, because that's just going to end up looking very messy. And that's so pretty, so make sure you pull everything out of there. And when I'm at the end of the bundle, I'm just going to do the exact same thing as I did for the front of the bundle. And that is to put the needle through the front as well. And again, I'm doing this <laughs> to make the wig a little bit more secure. <laughs> then onto the second track, and you want to make sure that you put it like just a little bit above the first track. Because the more space there is in between your tracks, like the thinner your wig is going to be. So especially at the back of the wig, I like to put it very close next to each other. But like the higher I get, the more space I keep between it, so that the top isn't looking very bulky. I'm just going to sew all the tracks on, and as you can see, I'm just doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So it isn't very difficult. But it is very time consuming. So you know, if you want to make a wig yourself as well, just keep in mind it's gonna take a long time. And that you need to have like at least one day off <laughs> in order to make it and finish it. So as you can see, I've sewn like the majority of the bundles onto the dome cap. And the hair is like very, very long. So what I'm going to do for the last part is I'm actually just going to sew the tracks on horizontally. So I'm not going to follow the curve of the head anymore, but I'm going to sew every track on horizontally. And I'm doing this because it makes the hair lay a lot flatter. Because otherwise you're going to have a very bulky and fake looking wig. And that's not what we want. So as you can see, I'm sewing it on horizontally. But again, that's like the only different thing that I'm doing. <laughs> like the way I'm sewing it on is just the exact same way as I did for the entire wig. So yeah. So now I'm going to sew on the last track of this wig, thank god. <laughs> and the way I'm doing it is I'm actually going to sew it onto the frontal as well. Uh, and this is going to make sure that there is no gap in between the frontal and the bundles. Because again, that's going to look pretty unnatural. So I'm just sewing it onto the frontal. And I'm using a different needle because of course I broke the other one. So yeah, good job Lindy. <laughs> now I need to buy a new needle. Also, I should have probably used some thread that was a little bit darker than this because this is very <laughs> bright and obvious. 
But you know, it's a little bit too late for that now, so we're just going to roll with it. Hello! Um, the wig is finally done, and... <laughs> I'm actually so mad, because like, the one time that I tried to make like, a very like, informative and helpful video, like literally everything goes wrong. Because I finished the wig and I filmed it as well, and I put it on my head, and it looked horrible <laughs> it looked so bad because it just isn't the color that i want it to be so what i did is actually dyed it again so let me show you guys this is the color of the wig right now it hasn't changed a lot but i kind of like toned it down a little bit because it was so bright and i didn't want to have a bright orange wig i actually want to have like a pretty natural looking wig but it was not natural at all so and i also straightened it so this is the wig right now and the hair is literally so nice like everything is going wrong with this wig but the hair oh my god it's so good it's such a good quality mm, i love it so much i did do a few things off camera, well they weren't really off camera, but it just was a hot mess. So I'm just going to explain to you guys what I did. Because there are a few things you have to do before you can put it on. The first thing you want to do is like when you're done with the wig, you actually get like this excess piece of like the mesh cap. And you just want to cut that off. So this is like gone right now. Uh, because of course you have the lace right here. So you don't need to have this cap because it's just gonna look weird. What I also did is I attached an elastic band in the inside of the wig because this is going to make it like stuck on your head better the way you can do that if you just take like an elastic band you can just bite it like wherever uh, and you want to measure it from one ear to the other one you kind of want to like stretch it out a little bit when it's on your head like don't stretch it out like completely but make sure it's like a little bit stretched out and then you just want to cut it off and then sew that to the inside of the wig and i also cut the excess lace up because the wig comes with like a really big part of lace at the front which you obviously don't need so i cut that off as well and the way you want to cut it is not try to not make like a straight line but make it kind of a little bit like rigid like this so it blends in with your skin better so i'm just going to put the wig on and then you can see for yourself what you think of it um it's not my best wig okay but i do like it so for today I'm actually not going to glue it on uh, because I have like the elastic band so it is like pretty secure. I'm just going to style it, going to make it look a little bit cuter, you know, because right now it's laying a little bit flat. So let me do that. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm laughing so hard at myself because this is literally like the worst wig tutorial ever. But overall like the wig itself is good. <laughs> The hair is a very sturdy, like it's not gonna go anywhere. Like the front too is nice. It's very long. <laughs> it's a cute wig though. I mean, the more I look at it, the more I appreciate it. Let me zoom you guys out a little bit. Let's hope you don't see the mess I got right here. <laughs> okay, I'm slowly starting to feel myself. <laughs> So yeah guys, this is how I make my own wigs. Uh, honestly, there are so many more things you can do to a wig. You can like cut it into a nice model. You can pluck the frontal to make it look more realistic. You can create baby hairs. There are like so many more things you can do. But those things are all like optional, you know. It doesn't really matter. It's just, it's just personal preference to be honest. But you know, I would honestly definitely recommend like if you're really planning on doing this just watch like some other tutorials as well because when i tried to learn this i've watched so many tutorials it's actually insane so i will link like a few tutorials that really helped me out in the description box down below so make sure to check those out as well because to be honest this is not a very good tutorial i think <laughs> maybe i mean maybe it's not that bad but it's not what i envisioned it to be <laughs> So yeah, this is the end of the video. Thank you for sticking around for so long. Uh, I really hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, big thank you to Ellie Grace for sponsoring this video and providing me with this beautiful hair. Honestly, like, I'm not saying this because I'm sponsored, but this hair really does feel extremely nice. 
I really wish my own hair felt like this, but it really doesn't. My hair feels crunchy, so. <laughs> so yeah, guys, please don't forget to follow me on my Instagram, which is at Crystal Lindy. And I really hope to see you guys in my next video.